Want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? Make it stop! Make it stop! Ah! What is up, everybody? Random Random Man here, bringing you my review for Dumb and Dumber 2. That's right, not the number 2, but T.O. Pretty clever title, which stars Jim Carrey, Jeff Daniels, Kathleen Turner, Lori Holden, Rachel Melvin, and Rob Riggle, and is directed by Bobby and Peter Ferrelli. Now the plot follows Lloyd Christmas and Harry Dunn, played by Jim Carrey and Jeff Daniels respectively, as they go on a road trip to find Harry's biological daughter, played by Rachel Melvin, who was given up for adoption by her biological mother, played by Kathleen Turner. I was looking forward to this sequel with moderate expectations. I mean, the original film is one of my all-time favorite comedies, as I just think it's one of the funniest movies ever made. The same can't be said for its prequel, Dumb and dumber -er, When Harry Met Lloyd, as I think it was such an atrocious follow-up. Seriously, stay away from that one. There was even a short-lived cartoon spinoff that aired one year after the original film first came out. So naturally, given the amount of popularity that the original movie has garnered over the past 20 years, its fair share of follow-ups did happen, with this one being its first official numbered sequel, if you can call it that, with the original duo returning into their trademark roles. But like I said before, I only had moderate expectations going in, as this movie could have gone in the direction of the original film or how its prequel turned out. But how was it? Let's run down the whole thing. Jim Carrey and Jeff Daniels are by far the best parts of this movie. They are why the original film works so well, and that also applies here once again to an extent, especially with Daniels in particular, as he is not as prominent in comedic roles as Carrey is, but I just think that it's such a pleasant joy to watch him on screen together once again, delivering quotable lines and employing physical humor that is just entertaining to watch. And for that, even though they have both aged 20 years on, both within the film's universe and in real life, I think these comedians have still got it. If only the same could be said with the rest of the cast. Kathleen Turner does do an admirable job as Frida Felcher, but she is in and out of the film way too much to have any lasting impression, and I didn't find her that funny altogether. Lori Holden, who people may remember as Andrea from The Walking Dead TV show, plays our main villain here, and not only did I think that her performance was bad, but what made it worse was the fact that she was hamming it up for the camera way too often to make it seem as if she was as humorous as the bad guys from the original film, and that didn't work. Also, Rob Riggle from the Jump Street movies plays twin brothers, yes, twin brothers, who assist Holden's character in trying to kill Lloyd and Harry, and while he was funny at times, including one moment, or several I should say, where paint is administered all over his body, other times, yeah, not so much. Finally, we have Rachel Melvin as the supposed daughter of Harry's, and like Lloyd and Harry's characters, she is also dumb. Way too dumb. She is an airhead of sorts, but then again, I couldn't take her seriously in any of the scenes that she was in, especially since she is the main focus for this movie to be centered around, for Harry in a familial sense, but for Lloyd in a romantic sense. And yes, she is very nice to look at, but then again, I didn't think her character cut it for me too much, especially since she was the main focus. And for that, other than Carrie and Daniel's characters, the rest of the cast here are just not up to par on the same level of comedic genius as our two leads. So I've already complained about the main cast. How about the story? Well, that is actually the biggest problem I have with this movie. Why? It commits the one crime that movie sequels do towards their original counterparts. It is literally the same structure, both in setup and in execution, as the original film. What do I mean by this? Well, not only are Lloyd and Harry going after Harry's supposed daughter, but they are also once again delivering a package that does not belong to them, and there are characters after them trying to kill them and retrieve said package. And that showed how much effort the writers put into the story here, as it is a blatant carbon copy of the original film, and I saw every moment that did happen within the first film coming from a mile away, and in succession as well, made it seem way too predictable of a plot. And that is really disappointing, concerning that writing is the key element in what makes a comedy funny. 
Speaking of the comedy, a lot of it did work here. I was laughing a lot throughout this movie, like when Lloyd and Harry are trying to use their intelligence to try to get out of the current situations they are in. But other times, I felt as if the comedy was trying way too hard to appeal to the lowest common denominator. Yes, Dumb and Dumber is now trying to do that, especially since the original did have a really smart script that used toilet humor and a bunch of other type of comedy sparingly throughout its running time. And this one runs at about an hour 40 minutes, so you're not dreading watching the next sequence, but then again, you're also feeling like time is flying by. Not too much in that sense of the word. Especially considering that this movie seemed as if it was following the same structure. Oh wait, it did! This brought back a huge sense of deja vu for me. Not only for the good moments from the original movie, but with the bad moments that were trying to be set up here in a modern comedy of this caliber. And given that it's also paired up with the very childish humor here, I don't think that this movie should be viewed by everyone, especially since I was in a theater with a bunch of younger viewers out there. And while I would show a viewer as young as the age of 10 the original movie, I wouldn't do the same with this one, especially with all the stuff that was trying to be crammed in here to try to appeal to everyone. And that was, frankly kind of a downer, especially since I grew up to love these characters for their stupidity. And for that, it made it seem very empty for what it was trying to accomplish. However, there are some fan service moments here present for die-hard lovers of the original movie such as myself. And while I did like the additions of Kathleen Turner's characters, who yes, was mentioned in the original movie but never seen, there were also other moments where it seemed like they were just trying to shoehorn in fan service for the sake of shoehorning fan service. Like the moment when the sheepdog van does pop up and when it does come into play, it does not last for long, but there is a nice moment that does occur after the end credits and during the end credits that is sure to please fans such as myself, but other than that, I don't think that this movie recaptures so much of the original movie, but it does also approve upon the prequel. My final thoughts on this movie are that Jim Carrey and Jeff Daniels are still hilarious together, and some of the comedy did make me laugh out loud at times. But the recycled plot, the rest of the cast just not being as funny as our two leads, and the humor just trying to appeal to way too much of a wide range of audiences in order to come off as being way too childish or way too adult for its own good, make this movie pretty mediocre in its own sense of that word. It's not as bad as the prequel, but then again, it doesn't have the comedic genius that the original movie did have when it came out 20 years ago. My final verdict. For Dumb and Dumber 2 is two and a half out of five stars. Thank you all, as always, for watching. Be sure to like this video, comment on what you thought of Dumb and Dumber 2, subscribe to my channel for more, and I'll catch you on the next movie review.